Hello, welcome back to Al Mahoudi Central. Uh, and the eagle eyed amongst you will notice that the viaduct's gone. When in fact, the viaduct's over there. And what we're going to do is if we come over here, we're going to be painting. Now, I do have a slight confession to make. I have tried to start painting. Uh, the viaduct previously and I filmed it and I was using uh, the technique of painting each individual brick and the span of the viaduct is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, piers with two arches either side so that's making uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven arches uh, so it's quite quite a length and it was, it was mind destroying, and I wasn't achieving the look that I wanted. Uh, so I've been researching on uh, the internet and YouTube videos, and I think I've come up with a way of obtaining the result I want, and in a quick manner as well. And that's through dry brushing. Not having any major viaducts uh, where I live, uh, I resorted to Google Earth, and then looking at the Ribblehead uh, viaduct, uh, which I'll switch to now, uh, you can see here that uh, you can get a good impression of what the stone looks like, the individual stones, how they're picked out, the mortar courses, what's growing underneath, uh, the brick lined arches as well, uh, the weathering styles which have occurred on, on the Ribblehead viaduct uh, and you get a good impression of how it would be. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the whole uh, structure in the main colour, uh, which is the kind of sandstone, kind of uh, the hard stone effect. So what I'm going to do is mix up some paint into this, uh, my makeshift uh, palette. Uh, now I've actually found some uh, yellow ochre. Now the yellow ochre by itself is a bit too vibrant, so I want to dull it down a little. So I've got some of this uh, raw sienna. Now you don't want to dominate this, so I'm only adding a little bit into the mix. Always remember, less is more. You can always add more. You can't take out. And I've got a big flat uh, one and a half inch brush. But I've also got some uh, acrylic paint, uh, acrylic thinner, which I'm going to add because that paint is slightly too thick. And again, it's the same with this, you don't want to add too much. Make sure that lid goes back on. So it's getting there. It's still a bit yellow to me, so what I intend to do is I've got some burnt umber. Now this is quite dark, so I'm only going to add a tiny bit. And there's literally only a, a little smidgen gone in there. Now what I've done is added some uh, titanium white to it uh, to lighten up that colour uh, and as you can see it's lightened it up into a kind of pastely kind of uh, yellowy white colour. Now I'm starting on the back of the viaduct here just in case it goes wrong uh, then it's easier to disguise and it's literally Painting on, making sure, literally take up any excess paint with the brush. So that's this side painted. Uh, I'm not going to teach you suck okay? it's, it's going to be painting, uh, slapping on the paint. So I'm going to do all the insides of the pillars, and then on the other side, and then in a jiffy. So that's the first coat on, and now it'll be a case of letting that dry. The acrylics is that it dries quicker and then it'll be a case of dry brushing on all the muck and the, the grime. The whole viaduct is now dry uh, and I'm going to be dry brushing it uh, starting off with the darker colours. So we're going to start off with some raw umber and then progressively uh, working up to the lighter colours. It started snowing outside. I don't know if you can see that but once again we're hit with with snow. And funnily enough, I look back at my old videos and a year enough last year we were hit with big snow 
Yeah, so it seems to be a, a common occurrence in the February. So what we're doing here, we've got a little bit of the uh, raw amber on a palette. And it's a case of loading it onto your brush. You don't want too much because you don't want to be wasting the, uh, the paint. And then brushing it onto some kind of uh, tissue paper just to get the excess off. We've got a stiff brush, quite a wide uh, bristle. And with this, we're going to go against the actual mortar course. So we're not going with the mortar course, we're going against it. Because that's how we're going to achieve the, the dry brushing effect. So we'll start on this one first. And at first you might not see any difference, but it, it is ever so little and subtle. The effects. And you can see the, dis the difference already. from that one to the others. So I'm going to layer up all these uh, different types of uh, dry brushing and then we'll have a look. Again I'm starting on the back just in case I make any massive mistakes then uh, it's not so obvious uh, but already I'm quite pleased with that. Obviously when I've blended in all the other different colours uh, hopefully we'll get the grimy effect that we we're achieving. First coat of the dry brushing has gone on with the uh, raw umber. You can see the difference between the, uh, the stone finish on there and then the dry brush finish on the edge. It's a much more grimy, mucky finish which is the, the uh, effect we want to achieve and this is only the first coat and you can see there's different types of uh, heavy dry brushing you can see there on that side compared to that side obviously this is the back uh, there's a slight gap there uh, so this is the rear of it but you can see the different amounts of dry brushing which I've done to give that kind of varied effect, which I'll achieve and hopefully do on the other side, which is the, the, the side which will face uh, people looking at it from this side. Still snowing. Mm. Got work later as well. The beauty of just slapping it on means that you can get some really good random effects. So you can see here, each pillar is different because of the way I've just literally got the brush Slammed it on and rubbed it in. And because you're rubbing it in in a different me uh, different way all the time, you're getting different uh, types of dry brushing onto the surface. So each one will be different. So that's the whole coat of the first coat of raw umber on the viaduct. You'll notice that I've gone a bit heavier down the bottom sections. So compared to the top, it's lighter and gradually gets darker. Obviously the darker bits is where the pillars are going to be meeting the actual ground. So naturally the mud is going to make it uh, muddier. So that's why I've gone a bit heavier on the, uh, on the dry brushing in those areas. But I'm actually quite pleased with how it's coming out. Compared to what it was, which was that yellow ochre mixed with a little hint of uh, of raw amber uh, it's certainly getting better and better with each uh, time I look at it so next up we'll be uh, letting this dry completely and I'll be deciding whether I need to go over another coat of raw amber or if I need to change the uh, next colour to a lighter colour so we're on to the next day just mixed up some uh, black acrylic paint with some of the uh, burnt umber this time 
uh, just a little bit of black has been mixed in. And you can see there, even just with a little bit, it changes the colour quite drastically. And I'm going to put this on here sparingly in certain places, just to, to dull it down. It's actually darker than it is actually appearing on the camera. So in real life, it's actually darker than it appears. It's appearing quite sandstony and light at the moment. Uh, but hopefully by putting some more of this on, it'll grubby it up more. The brownie black burnt umber mix has gone on into random places. And you can see on the piers, it's in different places on each one. So for my brick colour underneath, I've got some Humbrol Acrylic 70, which is red brick. But I've also got some rail match uh, acrylic colour as well. And that is, if the camera can work out, light brick. And that's 2423. Now these have been shaken, they've also been stirred. Because if paints have been sitting for a while, all the uh, sediment from the paint will go to the bottom. And all the viscous liquid will be to the top. So you just need to give it a good shake, a good stir before you start painting it on. So what I'm going to be doing is applying the Humbrol first because the lighter brick is slightly lighter and then I can go over that in a kind of dry brushing breath method again just to highlight some of the, the, the areas under the arches. Underneath the actual viaduct you'll notice that there is a ridge which is obviously the underneath of the stones hence why I've left that unpainted because I don't want it the brick colour because it's going to be a different type of stone. That's brick. This is stone. So once all the actual brick arches are painted, so I've still got all those to do, then I'm going to adopt the same type of painting method that I've chosen on the sides and the top to so that actual rail there, just so that it all blends in properly. All the arches are painted in the base coat of the Humbrol brick colour. So it's time to add some of this. Very much like brick. It's literally just slap it on, just to get that different kind of contact, uh, contrast between the, the dark brick and the, the light brick. And obviously this is wet and it will dry a bit darker, but you can still see uh, over here ever so slightly different hints of the dark and the uh, lighter brick shades and it's those subtle differences that just make a massive impact for when we put it on the layout. Whilst I'm uh, waiting for the under arches to dry I thought I would uh, use the time to paint all those ridges uh, which were missed on the uh, on the original uh, weathering. So uh, I've mixed up some yellow ochre uh, like we did on the original base coat for the uh, for the sides. I'm going to paint that with the base coat and then I'm going to muddy it up with the, the bright dry brushing technique that we adopted uh, previously. All the underneath of the ridges have done. So we're going to focus on the actual brick weathering now. Once that's dry, uh, the next step will be uh, to try and recreate that. The, the wash of the uh, mortar, the white wash which is <clears throat> prevalent on, on all the under, underside of the arches. And what I'm going to do to make that is to mix up some, uh, some white or cream uh, acrylic paint, mix it with some acrylic thinners uh, and then wash it all onto the onto the uh, under arches uh, leaving some in some heavy areas to get that variancy. So I'm going to crack on with that. What I'm going to use is I've got some Vallejo, that's Iraqi sand and we've got some matte white. Uh, we're going to dispense it into this uh, shot glass and then we're going to use some acrylic thinner just to wash it down. Now we 
don't need as much of the Iraqi sand. The Iraqi sand is just to take that brightness off and just to dull it down a little. So let's mix that, see what, what it looks like. Seems to be looking good. And it's a case of just adding the and then it's trial and error really. Uh, you add your thinner. And you decide whether you need a little bit more, in which case, in this case we do. And we can always add more. You can't take it out. And the wash needs to be like skimmed milk. Tiny more. Perfect. So how I'm applying this is getting on the brush, slapping it all over. I'm not adding any more to the brush because I, I want that variation underneath the arch so some areas like up there will be deeper in colour than other areas and then before it dries getting a paper tissue and taking up the excess you can rub both ways so it gets into all the crevices And you're left with that effect. So I've turned the viaduct uh, the right way up. I've applied some of the the wash that we used underneath the brick on the sides just to replicate some kind of uh, downward wash. And what I'm going to do now is is coat the entire thing in the uh, black acrylic wash, which is just simply you could either make it through uh, acrylic paint and water or acrylic paint and acrylic thinners. Uh, I'm not going to put this on heavy, it's just going to be a light wash just to blend things in. this pillar meets the river I'm just going to add a very uh, slight hint of green just to replicate some kind of algae uh, moss that's growing on the actual pillar which is hitting the water now this isn't as heavy or as deep as the uh, the brown which is already on the on the pillars uh, but it just gives that extra added dimension. These are the drain pipes which are going to be attached to the viaduct. They've been taken from the tutorial from Galgum Hall, uh, so do check out his video. Essentially <clears throat> it is florist wire. Uh, with a, let's see if we've got a spare one here. Florist wire uh, and then a smaller gauge wire which is wrapped around uh, for the brackets. And it's just a case of literally wrapping around the smaller gauge wire to get a small bracket and then taking it off and then trimming it down. 
they've all been uh, sprayed in primer and now it's a case of painting them uh, in your chosen colour. <clears throat> now looking at the mapping on the Rebel Head Viaduct, they seem to be, it's quite a new kind of guttering on there, it's a, sca a square guttering, uh, but they're all black, so that's the colour I'm going to pick on these. So I'm going to give them all a coat of black acrylic paint, and we'll see what it looks like. So they're all painted black. <clears throat> because I've primed them beforehand, I've just used a cheap uh, black acrylic paint. Uh, this is from the works. You don't need to use model paint. Uh, if you've primed it well, you can use any kind of decent paint. Now I've also added uh, something extra onto these. For the actual gutter collection, uh, which goes at the top of the drain pipe, which actually uh, funnels the water down the pipe. The pipe. Uh, I'll try and insert a photograph uh, of one here from, from a viaduct. Uh, I've tried to, to make my own. Uh, so what I've come up with, uh, I was looking through all the plastic card and anything like that for some kind of channeling, but I couldn't find anything. Uh, so what I have come up with is using these uh, wooden coffee stirrers. Now, uh, I have snipped off the ends, so you can see on that one, uh, so I can get the, the rounded bit, and if I move this up, you can see I've, I've painted some at the bottom now, they're drying, uh, and they'll be glued on top of the actual drain pipe, uh, so that it gives that realistic effect. I might add some, uh, some rusting effects to some of these uh, to some of these brackets just to give that kind of uh, element of realism uh, and also maybe some uh, y you always fundamentally find uh, weeds or uh, plants growing out the top of the the drain pipe out of the funnel itself so I might pop some pop some in there as well just a little bit of a uh, clump foliage or some scatter after that it'll be a case of uh, drilling into the uh, viaduct so that these prongs here uh, can be glued in. I'm just going to use some super glue because I've used the super glue to actually attach the brackets onto the uh, particular positions. Now these are all spaced three centimeters apart, uh, which I think is around eight foot in double uh, O scale. Uh, I'll drill in to the viaduct, and it'll be a case of gluing them into the viaduct uh, and seeing what they look like. This uh, is what I mean by the actual top of the, the guttering, the funnels, you can see them a bit clearer, clearer now. So they they will go on the top of these once they're painted. So it's just a case of plonking these back in, painting the tops and then they can go on that. So now it's a case of drilling the holes into the viaduct and all we're using is a, a very small uh, drill, bit, a drill bit which is a, uh, a 1.5 HSS uh, on a slow speed on your screwdriver. You can use an Archimedes drill, uh, those are the hand ones which you press down, uh, I just find these are a bit quicker. Uh, and what I do is I've already put one on, so I've got these lined up now, all the prongs are facing the right way. And it's just a case of lining up with, it, with one opposite to make sure that you've got it at the right height and that the bulge around the, the stone at the top is in the right place. And then in the middle, where the prong is, drill the first hole. <laughs> Viaduct's in place. I've still got to put some bushes around the bottom of it just to blend it all in. But if I take you closer in for a look, 
And the last, all we have to do now is put the 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 rails on and ballast and then weather the ballast. But that's not going to be done until I've got the upper sections done. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like uh, what you saw, give it a like. Uh, any comments are well received, uh, negative and positive. Uh, I'm always open to constructive criticism. And uh, if you want to see more videos from Alna Hoodie Central, click that, subs uh, that subscribe button. Thanks. Bye now.